I'm Father David from the Franciscans. And today with us, we are very privileged to have Father Brian Jordan, who is known as the Marathon Friar, the Running Priest, uh, a variety of different titles uh, for Father Brian, who has been running uh, marathons uh, in Boston and around the country for many, many years. Uh, you'll notice that Father Brian has on a distinct pair of what we would not call sandals, but running shoes. And uh, there's a story, I'm sure, about those. Uh, Brian, how are you? And tell us what the shoes are about. Thank you, uh, Father David. Uh, as a Franciscan, though, we uh, have the ability to uh, do outreach for various people, and we identify ourselves with them by dressing like them. Uh, I've run 60 marathons, and many uh, running runners who are Christian or not Christian uh, bemused me by the fact that I wear my Franciscan habit along with my running shoes to show identification of those in the running industry and the, uh, the running profession. Training for a marathon must be very difficult in a lot of ways. Could you tell us how training for a marathon has something to do with how people are kind of trained to be holy? Marathon running, I, I make it in the parallel way. I go towards the, the road to holiness. Uh, notice I said the word two roads. There's a road to holiness on the spiritual level, and there's a, ro there's a road to running on the actual physical level. Uh, both require discipline. Discipline implies freedom. You have to take care of your body. Realize that the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you will watch what you eat, uh, watch what you drink, uh, and you uh, take time. You allot your time uh, properly to do a amount of training of running. Uh, for myself, it takes at least four months to get into marathon uh, training shape. Uh, it will be a series of short runs of five miles, uh, up to 10 miles, up to 13 miles, which is a half marathon, uh, 15 miles, and then three uh, consecutive uh, Saturdays of doing 20 mile runs. And that matter, I guess for Franciscans in their own uh, formation to prayer, whether, whether it be as simply professed or solemnly professed, we, we take time to slowly going into uh, various ways of prayers, all different uh, contemplative prayers, uh, charismatic prayers, and like that. so it takes time on that journey of faith for us to grow and develop uh, to be spiritual people. Brian, you're running to draw attention to what's called the Decalogue of Assisi, which is a document that was put out by uh, the church in 2002 in, in celebration of the world leaders, religious leaders gathering in Assisi to pray for world peace. And they came out very strongly against any sort of religious violence in the name of God or in the name of religion. And you're running to draw attention to that. Could you tell us a little about that, please? First of all, I, I am very grateful uh, for the Holy Father John Paul II to hold not one, not two, but, but three uh, interfaith gatherings in Assisi, Italy, the home of uh, birthplace of St. Francis, the founder of our order. Uh, the one that they, d they met in January of 2002 is in direct response uh, of the attacks in 9-11 uh, here in New York City, uh, the Pentagon, and in Washington, D.C., and the down plain of Chancellor, Pennsylvania. And they all agreed upon it in that wonderful of 250 religious leaders in Assisi, the Basilica, that religion should never be used as a means of violence whatsoever. Religion means to bring people together, to bring peace and transformation. And this was the abuse of free will by 19 misguided men on September 11th. We should not use our religion as a means of destruction for anyone. Uh, we're all sisters and brothers of the same God. Almighty God, it would be very disappointing if we use his name for means of destruction. God does not destroy what God creates. Uh, in reading up uh, about the Decalogue, I, I saw that there was very little attention by uh, news media or newspapers around the world. Uh, it seemed like it was much more overshadowed by a variety of other things that were happening at the time. And, and one of the questions was, if all the world leaders, world religious leaders, gathered together to pray for peace, would anyone care? But it's my belief that a lot of people do care. I think they're not really properly familiarized or acquainted with this particular document. And had they done a lot of studies as it, as it truly deserves, I think it might make a, an impact on, on people's lives. I think we need to have a renewal and understanding, uh, reorientation what this document is, is all about. One last question, Brian. Two last questions, actually. Have you ever come in first place, and will you this year? I never came in first place, but I was never in last place. I was always in the middle. But since I have a, a knee injury, I'm probably more like a 
back in the pack around the, around the 75, 80 percent. But uh, as we always said in, in Boston, anyone who finishes is a winner. That's great. And you are one of the winners in the Friars. So we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. We pray for you. Please pray for us. God bless. Thank you.